Happy Monday, y'all. I hope everybody is doing all right. I'm feeling all right today, you know. One of them days for me, but I'm all right, you know. I'm push through like I always do, you know. Everybody had their days. Anyway, so y'all know that lately, you know, I've been talking a lot about, you know, astrology and the Bible. Because that's what the Bible was basically based off of. A whole lot of astrological, esoteric, and allegory meanings, you know. We were taught this stuff was literal, but we know now in this day and age, especially if you do your research and you do your study, that it's not literal, that these people are not literal. And even in the Bible, they do use esoteric meanings to describe some literal people. And see, this is the kicker. This is where it starts to get tricky because this is where you start to have to learn how to separate and decipher fiction from reality so when you talk about bible prophecy what people think is prophecy is nothing but a forewritten script when you talk about the scriptures you know if you really go back and look up that word you'll find it is nothing but a person that writes literature movies books or they create stories of the way that they would like to see things take place and they bring that movie to life by creating characters. And they find people to play these characters and they act it out on screen. So now when you look at all of the downplay and the stuff that they do behind the scenes when it comes to politics and religion. It's clear that we on like the yellow brick road looking for the Wizard of Oz. And it's somebody behind the curtain pulling the little strings. Well, they've already forewritten all these scripts. What people have to understand is that this book is a book of dynasty, as well as it's about astrology, okay? Some of the people talked about are real, especially when it gets to the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. And they describe these people using esoteric meanings of beasts of the, of the sea. And they talk about the four kingdoms, with that last kingdom being the Roman Empire, now, let me ask y'all a question. Who do y'all think those empires were? It was the Hellenistic Empire. What does that go back to? Hmm, the Greeks and the Romans, right? Who ended up ruling when it was all said and done? And it got down to the Anglo-American uh, the Anglo -American world power, which they called, you think it was the seventh and eighth final world power, or the eighth and final world power, the United Nations? Still the Romans. Who do y'all think still running stuff today? <laughs> same empire, same bloodline. All those kingdoms that they had back then in the Bible, right? Same bloodline, same empire. Right now today, the only thing different is they, they weren't called presidents back then. But, they were called kingdoms and kings. Still the same thing, just different names. They just, you know, they, they title, different titles. That's all it is. And they use titles and names to throw people off. I tell people that all the time. Even when it comes down to describing people and their cultural ethnicity, all these are names and classifications that they've created to keep division going and separate people, to throw you off, to figure out who you are. But the people that are still ruling, they're still the same Hellenistic dynasty all the same bloodline even obama where's his mother from hawaii same bloodline same uh same dynasty so when they talk about get out of babylon when they start talking about that in revelations about babylon the great falling they're talking about their empire but see in the jehovah witness religion they make you think that they're talking about all the people that's not serving jehovah these is the mind games that they play on us y'all and we wonder why so many of us leave that place suffering from pts pstd ptsd i mean i was diagnosed with it too last year when i was in therapy all last year okay i was a damn nutcase i'm gonna be honest with y'all i was to the point where i was ready to go into kingdom hall and burn it all down Okay, I was ready to burn my whole chapel down. Okay, I was ready to go post though. They had me right there. Thank God I had a wonderful therapist. His name is Clifford Clark. If anybody is in the metro Michigan area, Clifford Clark. Look him up, Clifford J. Clark. 
he is such an excellent therapist. I mean, this man, he never uttered one bad word out of their mouth, out of his mouth about these people. But he strategically laid all the pieces down. Because I'm not thinking about it like this. You got to remember, I'm in there, I'm mad, and I'm going crazy and going off and venting um, and mad about all the stuff they was doing to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not thinking that this is false religion. It still hadn't occurred to me yet. I knew it was something, things weren't right. I just was like, well, Jehovah going to get them. Oh, baby. Oh, then I had that grand awakening punching me in my forehead like, boom! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the truth was like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It hit me and I was like, oh, wow. So then if Jehovah ain't God, well, who is God? Yo, I went through a series of emotional Debbie Downers. I, I really did. You know what I'm saying? But when it start, I start really digging and going back to the things I was taught as a young person and realizing that I was taught all this stuff backwards. You know, in the Jehovah Witness religion, they tell you that they took Jesus and created false sun gods. They give us all this stuff backwards, y'all, in reverse. Again, I said it's on another video. That's called a spell. That's called a curse. When you have a person thinking backwards. Because what you're doing is you're giving them a, an illusion. You're making them mentally delusional. And we don't. We didn't know we was being, you know, forced with a mental psychosis. We thought we was really learning something beneficial, and we thought we was learning the truth. But they was giving it to us backwards, and it's the other way around. Jesus is a plagiarism, plagiarism of ancient sun gods, but they told us backwards that they made sun gods after Jesus and was worshiping false gods. When I saw Jesus is is a damn sun god. Come to find out. Mm. So when you talk, when you read Revelations and it talks about getting out of Babylon and about the, the great empire falling, all religion is falling because that's part of their, the, the Roman Empire, the Roman dynasty, the Hellenistic dynasty, religion, war, politics. Since they've been ruling, that's all we've experienced, pandemic after pandemic, war after war, in the name of God. All these different flags, people fighting over land. This is what they do. This is what their age of Pisces represents. Okay? So this is what they pray to their gods for. And while everybody thinking that these people can pray to God and pray to Jesus for all these wars, to win these wars, and we can come pray to God for salvation at the same time, baffles the hell out of me. Because I'll be like, okay, what kind of God is this? You know, you can't be slaving for two masters, Jesus. You either slaving for what's right or you slaving for blood. Which one is it, Jesus? I don't know now. This is the way they got us, though. Can you understand the, 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 the psychosis that will creating a person's mind this is why religious people most of them think that they can do dirt and get away with it because their bible makes them think that well nobody's perfect well when did perfection ever exist i never recall the bible saying that adam and eve which we know aren't real people but even when we believed it some of us believed it the bible never said anything about them being perfect so where did they get that from i'll wait we ain't gonna find it because it ain't in there they created it. Nothing's, it's never been perfection. But they use that to make it seem like, oh, well, that's what Jesus died for. But everybody else, but if he died, it say he died for all mankind, not just a certain group of people. So how is it that, you know, you can be forgiven for what you do, but everybody else is Satan, the devil? These people are nuts, y'all. I'm telling you, they're nuts. Be glad if you walked away from that. Just be glad that you have experienced some sort of mental freedom. Be glad that you can enjoy the simple things in life without feeling guilty. Like it's some spiritual huge being looking down on you, cursing you, or damning you to hell, some fiery place to burn, to, to burn forever just because you had a sexual thought. Or just because somebody walked by, you like the way their body look, or you like you, you, you attracted to them. Just be glad that now when you have the desire to want to have sex, which is a natural desire. I ain't talking about doing nothing crazy with the desire. I'm talking about just the natural desire itself. That you ain't beating yourself over the head thinking that you're doing something wrong and about to have a heart attack. Because you're like, oh, I ain't supposed to be thinking about sex. <laughs> be glad, you nations. <laughs> 
Be glad you nations. So anyway, when it talks about coming out of Babylon and the world ending, all of that is talking about the Hellenistic Roman dynasty. They still the same people, same bloodline.